Welcome to the Autodesk Fusion 360 What's New for May. Continuing with our theme from last month, we're bringing all the What's New updates into a single video, blending design, engineering, simulation, electronics and manufacturing into a delicious engineering smoothie. So let's kick things off with a few general improvements common to all workspaces. We've heard your requests and we're excited to announce the new snooze feature for Fusion 360 updates. Now you can choose to delay future product updates to a more convenient time, ensuring minimal disruptions to your workflow. You can snooze an update for up to 14 days, meaning you can keep your focus on the task at hand. This also means there is no need to take Fusion 360 offline just to avoid the update. Another ease of use improvement we're bringing to you in the May release is revamped dialogue customization. You can now resize dialogues from any edge or any corner, regardless of whether it's docked or not. And the cherry on top? Fusion 360 will also remember your settings for the next time you open it up. Moving on to the electronics workspace, last year we implemented the Signal Integrity extension, powered by ANSYS giving you the capability to analyze the critical traces carrying high-speed signals on your circuit board, providing visual insight into specified impedance, as well as getting details such as resistance, time delay, length, and much more during your routing process. And now we've made it even easier to access this functionality with the option to flexibly add this extension using tokens. So why not try it for free for 14 days to see if it can help improve your routing process? We recently added support for moving selected or new assets using the arrow keys, providing much needed precision when placing components in a specific location. We've now extended this functionality to save time and effort when replicating circuit assets or a section of your schematic design by adding arrow key support for pasted assets. After completing that single channel circuit, you can easily copy and paste it seven more times, keeping the symmetry needed for proper documentation for the new eight channel system you are working on. Using the arrow keys, the paste command will move the assets one grid point at a time with the same actions available in the PCB and library workspaces helping you place your components precisely where they need to go without using your mouse. The design rule checker helps identify if your board is manufacturable by checking clearance, layer management, width preferences, and much more. Many new checks have been added, such as checks for matched signal lengths for differential pairs, which will be flagged, in addition to supporting layer-based rule scoping for clearance and width rules. The new DRC engine retains the same interface, but will support faster rule scoping, meaning you experience a smoother working environment with the live DRC enabled, reducing the short stutter time gaps when moving assets. The pin breakout feature improves the clarity of the schematic, letting you see exactly how the individual pins of a component are connected to other parts and how the overall circuit is structured. For this update, we have converted the pin breakout command into a more accessible and flexible dialog box. With the list of pins of the selected components, you can easily select the pins you want to break out and which net naming convention you want to use. This will help you break out components with large pin counts into a simple format to speed up your design time without sacrificing organization. The realistic perspective of the 3D model makes it much easier to fine tune the component placement and many of you have contacted us requesting more control of what would appear on the silk screen of the 3D model. Previously, we only supported the conventional name and place layers for the top and bottom silk screen. But in this update, you will notice that in the PCB editor, the display command has a section for the editable layers sets. You can now select which layers will appear as silkscreen in your 3D models, 
providing more control of your layer management for notations such as fabrication details, company logo, copyright details and much more. We recently added the ability to import DXF files into the electronic workspace, allowing the addition of artwork, documentation necessary for manufacturing or warnings for the technician that will service the PCB. This workflow has now been improved with the implementation of an automatic zoom to fit, making it easier to identify the location of the DXF image when imported. The CAM processor lets you generate manufacturing data of your PCB in industry compatible formats such as ODB++ and Gerber's. It is highly flexible, letting you change or update sections for required output specifications which will automatically include your bill of material, pick and place and documentation images with more than one layer set page. The CAM processor has now been enhanced, enabling you to efficiently create better manufacturing documentation images of your board in a more practical format. We've given the injection molding simulation material database a major update expanded the range of materials available, including more manufacturers and refreshed some existing materials. While some outdated materials have been removed, the overall count has significantly increased, providing you with a wider selection to enhance your designs. We've made enhancements to our simulation cloud solve pipeline, switching to faster cloud machines for simulations. This boost is set to improve the performance of your cloud solve simulation tasks by approximately 20%. So get ready to enjoy quicker, more efficient simulations. Next up, we have Fusion 360's new reporting feature for injection molding simulation studies. You now have the power to create tailor-made reports, choosing exactly what information to include. Want to share your results with a colleague that doesn't use Fusion 360? No problem. You can also preview and tweak your report before generating the final version. And when you're happy with it, save it on the cloud or locally on your computer. This feature is all about customizability and convenience, aiming to improve your project efficiency and product creation process. This new function takes the fuss out of modeling lip groove or combined lip and groove features, handling it automatically. This added functionality is a sweet bonus for our product design extension users. Just specify your target edge and desired lip and voila, the plastic lip feature does the rest. It cleverly calculates dimensions using plastic rules, yet you still have the power to tweak things up in the advanced tab if needed. It's a real game changer because it makes the time consuming task of manually creating the lip so much easier. This feature allows you to tweak an external part within a larger assembly's context without having to exit the design. With this release, we're adding more commands to the edit in place function. Simply right click on an external component in the browser and click edit in place. You make the changes to the component right there with full context to the parent assembly. The new commands you have access to are interference checker, extend surface, surface reverse normal, stitch, unstitch, surface loft, boundary fill, solid pipe, thicken, replace face, silhouette split, solid rib, align, remove faces, remove features, select by name and select by boundary. This feature now supports conditional expressions and logical operators. It lets you fully automate parameter values for a start. Plus, the automation lets you whip up parts that can dynamically alter when a single parameter changes. You now have the power to add expressions to your parameter values. These can include if, and, or, and not statements. This is really about adding a fresh level of flexibility to your component development process. Say goodbye to the hassle of recreating drawings from scratch when you copy designs. Here's the scoop on the technical side. Whenever you copy a design, any linked drawings get copied too, and they're directly connected to your new independent design. So if you tweak the new design, 
These changes will only show up in the new drawings, not the old ones. It's all about helping you expand and diversify your services, as well as improving the sales cycle time. We're introducing a revamped mesh conversion for volumetric lattices, serving up some seriously high quality meshes. Say goodbye to stepping and other defects, and hello to a smoother surface finish than ever before on your lattice mesh outputs. The reduced triangle count means better performance on your downstream workflows, improving operational efficiency and reducing resource consumption. We've swapped out the old mesh algorithm for a fresh, more efficient one. From now on, when you right-click a body and select Create Mesh, Fusion 360 will automatically implement this new algorithm. We're all about making things easier and more efficient for you. Moving on to the manufacturing workspace, we're going to begin with some additive enhancements. First up, we have the slicing performance improvement when converting bodies that have volumetric lattices into the slice data needed for an additive toolpath for 3D printing. The complex nature of these geometries means slicing can be a time-consuming task. But in this update, bodies with volumetric lattice data can now be sliced up to eight times faster. This is a significant improvement in slicing performance, though importantly, without compromising the resolution of the sliced outcome. For fused filament fabrication or FFF printers, you can now set individual slice settings for volume, bar, and setter support types. Previously, the body print settings would dictate the slicing for each support structure. But by enabling individual settings, multiple support types can be used, with slicing settings that are best suited to each support type. For multi-component printing, object placement within the build volume can be done quickly and easily with the additive arrange feature to automatically pack parts in 2D or 3D arrangements. For this release, you will now be able to see a list of all the components within the Additive Arrange dialog. Additionally, you will also be able to add or remove components from this list either by simply clicking them within the graphics window or by highlighting them in the list and pressing the X button, reducing the time it takes to get to the parts you want printing. We have now made it easier to identify all bodies that use particular print setting presets. Now, when you select a body preset in the browser, the bodies which have that preset will be highlighted in the graphics window, speeding up the identification of which bodies use which presets. When it comes to the export of your Fusion Additive setups, selecting 3MF files will now combine that export with a dynamic preview of that file in both Windows Explorer and the Finder for Mac users. Additionally, when the file is selected in Windows with the preview pane enabled, a larger 3D view can be seen, all of which makes it easier to identify your designs within the folders on your local drives. Continuing that theme, thumbnail images are also created for files exported to Prusa printers. Once you create a machine build file, the SL1 archive that is created will contain a 400 by 400 pixel image and an 800 by 400 pixel image, which can be read and displayed on the printer, making it easy to identify that you are printing the correct file. For turning profiles, the option to use a no dragging motion has been enabled for rest roughing operations. This means that the operation will now push the tool into the part as opposed to dragging the tool up the part. By doing this, the tool is put into a compressive state, the cutting conditions are more favorable for the insert, and the swarf is not dragged up the face of the component, improving tool life and part finish. In a drive to improve the four axis capabilities of Fusion 360, coming out of preview and into the machining extension is Rotary Pocket. This four axis roughing strategy lets you tackle more complex geometry when compared to a four axis wrap allowing the efficient removal of material from cylindrical, conical and freeform parts rotating around a fourth axis. To complement the rotary pocket strategy, also coming out of preview and into the machining extension is the rotary contour strategy. 
This is a four axis simultaneous strategy designed to finish machine the sidewalls of features which radiate from the central axis of a part. Both rotary pocket and rotary contour strategies support flat end mills, ball nose, and bull nose tool types, and have a range of options to control the toolpath, such as boundary limits, ordering options, rest machining, and automatic shaft and holder clearance checking. These options are designed to optimize cutting conditions to prolong tool life and help minimize overall machining cycle time. The combination of rotary pocket and rotary contour alongside the existing rotary toolpath means that Fusion 360 will provide a more efficient solution for the machining of four axis parts. For the machining extension preview, as well as contour, ramp, flow and blend, additional multi-axis options have been enabled for multi-axis contour. This improvement provides more control over the tool axis definition with options like to and from lines and points, automatic collision avoidance and axis limit controls. This gives you more choice and control over your tool axis, boosting the ability to use shorter tools with less deflection and vibration to produce better quality surface finishes on your parts. The flat toolpath strategy has been expanded with a new option to machine only profiles. This new option effectively produces a 2D contour toolpath, but with a number of benefits, including being model aware, as well as being applicable for rest machining. What's more, this strategy can also be set to cut multiple depths, meaning it could be used as an effective wall finishing strategy for vertical model faces. Moving on to nesting and fabrication and coming into the extension preview are a number of new options for the automated arrange function to help maximize material usage and improve manufacturing throughput. First is the option to set the arrange priority from very low to very high. This asks the arrange algorithm to arrange higher priority items first, ideal if you're looking to prioritize the first components needed for an assembly before those that are needed later in the assembly process. Next we have quantity, where you can specify how many of a certain component or components you want in a given arrangement. And lastly we have filler parts, which will automatically populate the arrange envelope with the chosen component and specified number. This is especially useful as it allows the inclusion of commonly used components that are always needed in stock to be made from otherwise wasted material, maximizing your sheet material yield. Coming into preview for simulation are a number of enhancements for the way in which collisions and warnings are reported. To get the full benefit, a number of preview options will need to be switched on, such as over travel and retract and reconfigure reporting, as well as machine tool collisions and stock simulation improvements. But once on, you will see an enhanced experience that provides more detail to you in regards to collisions and warnings, including an improved timeline display, pop-up notifications, and an issues list that will let you jump to selected issues. Additionally, inspection moves should no longer cause fake collisions, so your timeline bar should be collision-free if all is well. All of these improvements aim to improve your confidence in running your toolpaths on your machine. And that's everything for this release video. Thanks for watching this update, and don't forget to check out the blog post to learn about what else is new in Autodesk Fusion 360.